I'm Ed Zinke, and my background is particularly in theology. I started out in the ministry, then joined biblical research at the General Conference for 16 years, then went into business for myself. In the last 10 years after we sold the business, I have been working on many projects for the church, but particularly creation-type projects such as this one, and I'm just delighted to be here. Origins are discussed particularly in the book of Genesis and then restated in the book of Exodus. But the entire Bible is really dependent upon the Genesis account. If we take Genesis out, then we begin to distort, to distort other parts of the Bible, and, and the rest of the Bible doesn't make so much sense. Christ uh, affirmed creation when he talked about husband and wife and the fact that that's the way it was from creation. And many other parts of both the Old and New Testament refer to the cre creation account. And so, really, if you're... You have the choice. Either you're going to accept what the Bible says, or why should you go to the Bible at all unless there's some special spiritual lesson. But it really alters the entire message of Scripture if you don't accept what it says about creation. Well, my field is particularly theology, and I've learned that, that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, and that he really is, he has life within himself. He, he is not dependent upon our philosophies or our reasoning for an understanding of who he is. If we want to understand the world which he's created, we need to depend upon on his word. God's book, the Bible, is really his love letter to us. And so we should read it as his love letter. He would like to tell us about himself and tell us about ourselves so that we can understand how to relate to God. Yeah, so that's an interesting question because we did run a business for 35 years, my wife and I. We had many vendors who were selling us product, and these vendors often mentioned that there were only two companies in the United States that they would really trust, and our company was one of them. And that was because we considered them as important as our customers. Uh, if we didn't have them, we had nothing to sell. Uh, but besides that, of course, we wanted to be true to our word, and when we made a promise to them, we kept our promises, whereas many of our competitors didn't operate that way. And then our employees also enjoyed the family, the family uh, setting that, that we offered, and when we finally sold the business, they commented that, that the whole business had changed, and they missed that family aspect and, and the warmth that they had with us when we operated the business. The Bible is God's word and it's the basis upon which we can understand God and the world in which we live. And uh, philosophy really is man's attempt to discover God or something eternal, some, something solid in the universe. Uh, the Bible is God reaching down to us and telling us about the world that we live in and, and telling us about the eternal truths, including the plan of salvation. So if we start with philosophy, we create a God uh, of our own choosing. If we start with Scripture, we allow God to reveal himself to us. Well, now that's an interesting question. Uh, if we don't have the Bible to guide us in our study of nature, 
what does nature tell us about God? Uh, nature is, is really a, a mixed bag. It, uh, on the one hand, we have beauty in the natural world. We even have warmth of human friendship, but we also see the tragedy in the natural world. Uh, storms and earthquakes and tsunamis, and uh, we see nations fighting. We see uh, friction among human beings. And so what does it really tell us about God? Uh, there, starting with nature, it can tell us many things. You know, maybe there are many gods, good gods and bad gods. So you need to figure out how to stay on the side of the good gods. Or maybe there's two gods, one good god and one bad god, or one god with two natures, a good nature and a bad nature, one of the worst possible scenarios. And there are many other possibilities with God. Only when when God reveals himself to us can we know him as our Savior and as a God of love, a God who is preparing a heavenly home for us. However, I should add, when you look at nature through the glasses of Scripture so that we understand where evil came from and that it wasn't God's creation, it wasn't God's uh, choice for this to happen in the world, uh, we can indeed see wonderful design uh, we can see how God cares for his creatures, and we can, we can understand uh, his incredible power in the natural world. And so there's definitely value to nature, but we need to come to nature through the glasses of Scripture in order to understand the God who created this world. Okay, so the question is kind of asking about the relationship between science and Scripture and asking why can't we just compromise and take the scientific explanation of theistic evolution or just plain evolution rather than the biblical explanation of God's creation in six days uh, a short time ago. And so, so let's think, what does that tell us about God if he created us through tooth and claw over hundreds of millions of years. Now, God is seen as a God of love, a God of power, a God of knowledge. But we can't hold all three of those at the same time if we accept theistic evolution. So we could say that God's a loving God and he's all-powerful, but the poor guy, he's not very smart. And so he wasn't able to create us like he said he did. In Genesis, he created us over a long period of time and brought us through tooth and claw uh, just because he wanted finally to have fellowship with us. Or we can say that God is, is smart and he's a God of love, but he's not very powerful. So that's, again, is the best he could do under his circumstances. And while it pained him as well, it, it his goal was to finally have us as humans. Or we can say that God, God is powerful and he's all-knowing, but he's not a God of love, the absolute worst possible scenario. But we can't hold all three of those together and, and worship the God who's revealed himself in Scripture if we deny what he says about creation. In addition to that, um, Creation tells us about ourselves, it tells us that we were created in the image of God. If we don't accept that, who are we? Am I the son of a chimpanzee or some kind of an animal? Or, you know, who, who really am I and, and why am I here and, and where am I going? And so it raises ma major questions about who we are. And then think about God. If God is a God of love, and he's revealed himself to us through his word, and he wants to have fellowship with us as, as the Sabbath represents. Here, here he was, God was there the very day of creation to fellowship with us. Uh, so if God desires to fellowship with us, would it make sense for him to create us hundreds of millions of years ago and then finally 6,000 years ago come and say, oh, I forgot, I created you for fellowship. I'm going to, I'm going to be part of, of your community. Um, 
And so you see, it just gives a completely distorted view of God. It also calls into question the Bible. Is the Bible really the word of God? Or is it just simply the traditions of men? And uh, so if, if we don't accept what the Bible says about creation, where else can we rely on scripture? Or are we simply relying, as I said, on stories around campfires that were passed on from generation to generation, not really the word of God communicated to us in order that we might know him, the only true God. Well, that's a good question. And Jesus addresses that question in John 17, 3, where he says, and this is life eternal that they might know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So salvation, Christianity is a relationship that we have with God. And it's a relationship that is not an empty relationship, it's a full relationship. And so that's why Christ said, this is life eternal that they might know him. That word know in the Greek, implies intimate relationship, but also knowledge about the other person. And so think about it in human relationships. uh, If we're going to have a relationship, it's important for us to understand the other person, to understand ourselves, and to understand how to relate uh, to the other person. And so in our relationship with God, creation tells us that God is the creator and we are the creator, uh, that we were created in his image for fellowship. Uh, that even with the coming of sin, that God is there to restore us to himself and finally to take us home with him. And so doctrine is important. Without doctrine, we're worshiping a God that we don't know. With doctrine, we're worshiping the all-loving God that desires to have us in his arms. The history of theology is quite varied, and much of theology has attempted to build its understanding of God from a philosophical system instead of a biblical system. Now, they have claimed that they were using Scripture, but they have imposed those philosophical systems upon Scripture. And so, if we are to truly know God as he has revealed himself to us, we must go to his word, to the Bible. And that will tell us about who God is. That's how God wants us to know him. He, the secret things belong unto God, but the things revealed belong unto us. He's told, him, he's told us about himself in order that we might enter a personal relationship with him. It's too bad if we turn away from his word and accept the word of mankind in place of God's word. <laughs> 